In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a round circular return address like this one pictured. Um, I love this because it's just easier to print at home. One of the things I find on my home printers is that if we have really straight lines, it's really obvious if something's even like one degree crooked um, or the envelope doesn't feed very well. And so you end up printing a lot more extras. But when you have something like this, it's a curve next to the very straight line of the envelope. And so if it happens to print 1% crooked, you're not really noticing it at all. So I love this. I think it's really nice. And it's also just cute. And then another added benefit is that it's not going to accidentally get confused for the main address, which is an issue that we sometimes have with putting the return address on the flat side of the envelope. Um, and you might have noticed this with the post office if you sent a lot of return addresses on the flap, if you make them too big or if you make them look like the main address, then what's going to happen is you're going to get all the guest address envelopes back to the return address. And that's not what we want at all, because then you're going to have to reapply postage and send them back through the mail and you're going to lose a lot, a lot of time. So added benefit of this rounded address. And I just think it's really cute. Look how cute it is with the rest of the suite. I love it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer and I love to teach people how to design and produce beautiful wedding invitations. We have a whole membership for stationers called Stationery School where you get two courses every single month and videos and tutorials like these every week delivered to your inbox. So check that out in the description of this video. All right, so we have our suite and what we are going to put the return address around is this cactus. It's important to have something to put the address around. Of course, you can just do a circle, but it's kind of boring. So I would recommend putting it around something so that it looks more intentional. So I usually just choose an element from the suite and we're going to make that black because we can only really print black on these envelopes. So then we're going to make a circle and you can make it around the object, but you can always resize it later. So don't pay too much attention to that. We're going to have no fill on that circle. And then we'll go over to our T for text tool and we'll go with type on a path. I always start kind of on this left upwards portion because I think if you're reading an address in a circle, that's kind of where you would initially start. So we're gonna start right here and you can of course adjust this later. And then we're just gonna type a fake address because we don't have the real one yet. Okay, we'll select all. Obviously, this is a terrible font. We're gonna change it to our other font. We're gonna make it pretty small. And of course, we're gonna change this tracking down. Let's do it at 25. This is supposed to be a, a bar. Birmingham, Alabama, okay. And we can see how long it is. Um, if you want to keep the font at exactly 10, um, then this is, then you should, no. And you can see how long this is. I'm going to go ahead and resize it to the shape. When you resize it, it just makes the font smaller. It doesn't keep the font the same size and resize the image. So if you wanted to keep the font at 10, you can resize it. And then I'm going to actually try and just increase this tracking a bit till it goes over here. You can put another like a bar right here. I think that's kind of nice to separate into addresses. But if you're thinking about that in a straight format, it's basically putting a bar kind of in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't make sense. So I don't always love to include it, uh, but you can do that. I always just kind of put a little space in between the addresses. You can include their names there if you want. There's just a million things you can do here if you want. And I'm actually going to make the font a tad smaller, which is going to require me to space this out a bit more, which is fine by me. All right, so that is kind of where we're at. It looks a little off center, so I'm just going to rotate the circle. That's one cool thing about it is you can just rotate this and it'll be starting in a different place. You can also play with the area where it starts by just clicking these little buttons here. You can also use these lines and anchor points here to adjust where the text starts and ends upon the circle. Uh, but if you're using a circle, it's really easy to just kind of rotate it around to look how you want it to look. And I might even erase this bar because then it kind of looks like 
balanced with those two spaces right there. We're going to have to readjust this when I get the actual return address from them, uh, but I think it's really cute. And then I'll move it down just a tad. And I think that is perfect, looks nice with everything else on the suite, and is my favorite part is going to be really easy to print. So let me know what questions you have about typing on a path. Here's another example of how I use type on a path to make wavy text, which is just so fun for this piece and then kind of corresponding pieces for the uh, RSVP and the password, which I've redacted for this video. While you're here, I hope you'll check out some of our other Adobe tutorials and invitation design tutorials in general. And let us know what you thought of this video, like subscribe, comment to see more. Thanks everyone.